What's up everybody? Welcome back to another StarCraft Brood War Remastered cast. I usually do longer series, but I saw this singular game between Shine and Speed, and I just had to jump in. I wanted to see what this one was like. And they didn't <clears throat> they didn't match up any uh, more times on the ladder unfortunately, but I'm glad we're going to get one game here anyway. Speed has been impressing me so much lately. It's been an absolute joy to watch. Shine, one of the craftier Zerg players, always coming up with some new builds and new ways to approach not only this matchup, but every matchup that Zerg has. Also, an awesome player to keep an eye on, to keep watching. And I'm curious. Truly curious what we're going to see on cross map Pantheon between these two guys. This is a huge map, a lot of bases, not many high grounds. In fact, no high ground bases on this map. Everything is on low ground, though there are some chokes. There's some ramps, some strange looking ramps. You can see this triangle ramp. I think that's what I'll call it. Not truly a ramp. There's only a tiny bit of high ground up there. It's kind of like a half ramp that's cut off with another half ramp. And so it won't play as big of an impact in this TVZ as it would on some other maps. Like a lot of other maps, you're going to be reliant on those high grounds. You're going to be reliant on those chokes as Zerg to pull off certain strategy. And you just can't truly do that here. You can try, uh, but it's not going to be as strong. For instance, setting up lurkers right along here, it'll still work, but it won't work as well as if you're on high ground and the the uh, Marines had to run up into the lurker spine. So we're going to start out here with a barracks supply depot, supply depot wall. Nearly ling tight, except for this tiny hole above the, the supply depot. Shine. He's got his hatchery up. He's got his lair on the way. It's a pretty early lair. And so he's probably going to rush out some mutas. He's been partial to more normal play. In the past, I would have pegged him as like, oh, maybe he's going to go lurkers or something crazy, but it's not really that guy too much anymore. He tends to do crazy stuff reactively rather than proactively in most of his games these days. Engineering Bay on the way. That is Engineering Bay before Academy, which means we're going for a plus one build. It's a strong way to play. Definitely not out of the ordinary for uh, Terran players in the, the most recent meta. Nice catch there, finishing that off before the lair gets done, which is a key a point to note. Starting the spire before four minutes. Pretty sharp timing here from Shine, but because he, Speed didn't see with his SCV what was set down, well, you can pretty much tell that it's not a lurker you can't be, or a lurker play you can't be a hundred percent sure generally what you're gonna do if you want to go lurkers you need to throw down your hydroden when the layer is about halfway done that way when the layer is finished you can immediately begin your lurker upgrade so just the fact that he didn't see a hydroden up until the layer was almost done gives him a pretty good idea that it's not going to be lurkers he still wants to get the single comm set though, just to go ahead and scout the main, make sure that there's not something crazy coming out of Shine. Third base is going to be up here at the 12 o'clock, which is honestly a pretty difficult base to hold. I've had some trouble setting up lurkers on this low ground. If the Marines get up onto this high ground, maybe it's better to set lurkers up here. And from any direction that they come, it's going to be pretty defensible. Maybe that's what I was doing wrong when I played on this map last. 
Ling's tracking these Marines. He's watching for that five minute move out. And as you can see, five minute 30 has now come and gone. And there's still no move out from the Terran player. It's pretty clear to Shine that this is some sort of plus one build. If you're going for an Academy Rush with two racks, five minutes is the point when you want to start moving across the map. And since that push is not coming, by process of elimination, pretty much know that it's likely four racks with plus one on the way. So Shine going to dip into this main base, confirm the build. He sees everything. He sees that the turrets are done as well. If the turret's just barely not complete, you can sometimes snipe an SCV. And that could spiral out of control for the Terran player. But everything on time for speed is going to come running out. Tries to get a kill on a Ling, but not even able to get one kill. Now a 7 meter is going to start to punish this mineral line. See how many kills he can get. So far, two. Want to get at least five. Three so far. Gonna loop around towards these Marines, check and see if they're moving out or not. Doesn't see the move out, gonna look for another couple of SCVs. Three, four, and let's see if he goes for just one more. No, not gonna risk it. Going to move back into the middle of the map and get ready for a surround on these Marines. He's got some more uh, Mutas joining the pack. Now up to 11. Gonna chase these Marines in the middle of the map. Hydra Den starts. I think we're gonna see a dive now from Shine. He's diving on top of the Marines. The reinforcements pull up and will actually hold this off. Wow. Not bad there from speed. A little bit off time from Shine. You see someone like Solki, they always he always moves his lings into position right as the Mutilus arrive. And Shine was slightly off with that. He wasn't able to get the links on top of the Marines as the Mutas were engaging. So he takes not the greatest trade. He loses quite a few Mutas. He's forced to make another big group of Mutas. And he didn't get the SCV damage that he was looking for. Only managed to kill four. Now you can see that speed is slowing down on his SCV production. In fact, he stopped it altogether at this point. 36 SCVs is an excellent place to power on two bases as Terran and look to put some punishment onto the Zerg player as they try to transition into that Hive play. We haven't seen the Hive just yet. In fact, we only see Hydras popping out. Some Lurkers are being made. The Queen's Nest is done. There's the Hive. It's a little bit slow though. Feels like maybe Shine uh, might have clicked that button and not had enough money or something like that. Which is an unfortunate cir circumstance that happens more often than I'd like to admit, but it seems like it's happening to shine too, so I don't feel too bad about it. With the lateness of the hive, you are vulnerable to a Valkyrie push. However, that doesn't seem to be the case. Science facility on the way. Just going to be straight up SK Terran follow up from our Terran speed. I expect him to start popping out dropships soon, though. I don't expect him to sit there and irradiate and just try to macro up to four bases. I expect something crazy, and I'm not going to be disappointed. Speed just making a bum rush for 12 o'clock, trying to get up here before the lurkers are done. The one sunken colony, a tempting target, but it's not going to be broken just yet. We're just hitting from high ground. Going to pick off a few more of these Marines on the exit. And now that Lurkers are finished, he is going to be able to hold that position. See, I don't like... I don't know. I think maybe putting Lurkers on high ground like that might be better. I'm not sure. But I was doing what Shine's doing in this game. And I was getting broken <laughs> pretty often. Marines can come running down. And they can actually make a, a pretty decent line before the mute or the the lurkers pick them all off especially with plus one armor and plus one armor is done it's going to take quite a few hits from those lurkers to kill it's going to take three hits in fact and so with just three lurkers sometimes the hits don't line up as well as you'd like and you don't really have vision on the high ground to see the army coming so all of a sudden just like that 
the Marines will run down that ramp. And if you're not paying attention, if you're not targeting, if you're not watching that area, you could just lose everything. Now, diving on some medics is kind of interesting. Before finishing off the Marines, I don't know if I agree with that. You really wanted to pick off a few medics. Maybe you're worried about getting busted. That's usually why the reason why you would go for medic snipes uh, as the Zerg player. When you've got a bunch of sunkins and you're just afraid of getting uh, busted wide open right before you've got Lurker or Defiler tech ready. Um, doesn't seem to be the case, but I don't know. Maybe we'll see a bust. Lurker's under the Overlord, but just barely not. There's actually a little corner here. I think he can click that. He does it properly. No Overlord at the third base, and no Nidus either, which is a bit worrying. Goes for an Irradiate. Two Irradiates, in fact, on these Mutas. Dealing uh, quite a significant amount of damage. There's still quite a few Mutas left over, but look at how bruised all of these are. They won't be very effective, aside from maybe stopping drops a little bit later on. We have two dropships on the way. Speed going to take multiple new expansions. He's already got a third up. He will be taking a fourth soon. Defiler Consume is done. Upgrades are on the way. He's actually going for missile attacks, so you know what that means. Hydra Defiler going to be the play of the day for Shine. Try to take down speed with just pure macro Hydra and lots of plagues. He has to survive this moment in the game though first. The speed's going to make it crazy. Dropping, maybe doing a racer tricks at the same time potentially. Going to fly in, maybe lose a... Oh, great snipe there. Very, very good moves from Shine. They radiate on the... Oh, he didn't bring the other two Scourge, though. That's unfortunate. If he had sniped both of those dropships, we wouldn't be able to reload and send in more units like what Speed is doing now. And the drop would just com be completely shut down in its entirety. Now, I don't see uh, upgrades coming for Plague just yet, which is a bit worrisome. Plague has not been researched, I don't think. Radiant's going to go down on these Mutas, which are desperately trying to hold against the Marines in the main, and they're not going to do too good of a job. One Lurker remains. Oh, he does get one Vessel anyway. Drop going to be landed in the back behind the Mineral Line, and the Lings are not going to get there in time. Okay, they just barely get there in time. he got to turn the Scourge now. Okay, he gets the uh, Dropship at least, and he clears out the main, so... A reasonable hold from Shine, but it was not pretty. Not the prettiest thing in the world. It could have been a lot worse. Imagine if both of those two dropships had survived. How bad this could have been. There's the plague finally getting started. Some more drones are going to be made, but he needs to get Hydras out. Prevent these uh, eraser tricks from coming down. Oh, gonna get one of those vessels, but he targets the wrong vessel when it comes to getting rid of this eraser. And now it's starting to get really bad. 38 drones remain. And more are falling every moment. More drops could be on the way as well, although I don't see any in the production tab, and it seems like we're going to just have a transition out of speed. Speed maybe just going into battle cruiser and putting on the more and more pressure, trying to keep it on and eventually take Shine out. Shine is on the death on death's door, but at 71 supply, you can still hold on. It's not a comfortable hold, but it is a hold nonetheless. Needs to pump up that drone count a bit more. And then start to fire out all these hydralis and get moving with the defiler and plague play you can see a lot of marines heading out to different locations on the map preparing for now a five base terran economy holding this many bases as terran is tough but if you can keep the pressure on the zerg and 
not allow them to leave their base, then it really isn't a difficult task at all. You can see he's preparing for Zerg to eventually be unleashed on the map. And for these little outposts to be able to hold uh, Zerg attacks on their own. One lurker over at the third is holding on for now. A big plague goes down on a lot of these Marines. We're going to have vessels move forward. There we go. Picking off the Marines now, finally. Medics using up a lot of their energy, but they will win the day against these 1-1 one, one Hydras. 2-1 is finished on the Marines and Medics. Uh, Marines and Firebats, I should say. Gonna get irradiated here, but keeping this one Defiler alive is pretty darn good. Let's get forward with just a very small number of Hydras. Still able to push back the vessels. And we'll start to take out a lot of these marine forces. There we go. Clearing this out with a small special forces-esque unit composition. Just a few Hydras and a few Defilers. Able to do some good damage. Now these lurkers heading out on the map are kind of funny. I don't know how much damage they're going to do. They will actually get in to the bottom left, it seems. But with the bunker... And defense is in that base. It's unlikely they'll do a huge amount of damage. Looks like they've been forgotten about for now. Looks Now they're on the move. Heading towards bottom left. But how much can they be expected to do? Oh boy. Getting some damage there. Picking off a few marines. Not bad. With the plus one attack on those lurkers. They do two shot once again. And there's no way to... Avoid that two shot by getting more armors armor on these marines. So eventually the lurkers are going to be very strong They get plague Getting those science vessels pushing them back But more irradiates getting traded out and we're no closer to a third base just yet for Shine he's still kind of drying up Without being able to make any moves on the map He's going to run low on gas pretty soon. Two drops coming in towards this third base. And if they both get shut down, I tell you what, that's a great way to come back in a game like this. You pick off that many Marines and the two drop ships, and suddenly you're going to have a lot of freedom on the map, and your army might even start to get a little bit bigger than the Terran player. There's so much... Wow, there's actually such a big supply differential, so I, I guess I have to take that back. Pretty rough supply differential. Nearly a hundred more units for speed. Uh, back up to 42 workers, though, and he clears out this small army. We'll be able to eventually take this high ground base, but it's not a great base to try and take. Doesn't feel good to have that base. Not nearly as good as grabbing one of these gases. Army's going to push forward. Does he have the defiler? He does have a defiler ready. Some irradiate's going to be thrown down. And he probably just make that into a lurker egg. Indeed he does. But shine is pushed to the absolute limit. There's almost no way to win this game at this point. But he's still going to give it his best shot. Would love to have jumped on some of those science vessels, pick off a couple of the low HP ones, but hasn't been able to make that happen. Need to get a plague on some of this stuff. Uh, plague going to go down on some marines, but he loses two, uh, two defilers as a result and can hardly afford to make defilers anymore. This gas is about to go uh, extinct. This one as well. This extractor is just about gone. This, we are almost at the limit of what we can do in this game. Gonna run up and kill the tank at least. And pushing back these marines means maybe he can try to take center left. But things are looking really, really bad. 2,000 minerals in the bank. And he's just gonna start irradiating drones at this point. The drone irradiate is ridiculous. It's so painful. So annoying. Pushing in towards this natural. Shine is having a hell of a time. 
making any progress on this map. He kills off quite a few of the vessels, but it seems like this drop is going to get in. Ah, I wasn't able to kill the, either of the two drop ships, and this is going to deal so much damage. There's a big plague, but the armor, I think, just got denied. He has plus two, but his plus three attack was almost finished, and you can imagine that he started plus three armor before that plus three attack, so... Losing those two evolution chambers, you cannot overestimate the the value of that snipe, but at this point in the game, it's almost a foregone conclusion that Shine will end up getting taken down. Completely overwhelmed at this point. He's putting together just a few last hydras to try and clear out this drop. He's gonna lose his spawning pool. Oh, it's so close. He just barely doesn't lose it, managing to keep that alive. The very last moment, he's got some Scourge here that are ready. They just need to be sent for forward to deal with this. There we go. He is able to send those out. Still has not transferred drones over to this fourth base, though. And tanks are now getting set up at the natural. Has some Hydras under Dark Swarm, but tanks do not worry about that. Tanks are going to be able to deal with these Hydras, no problem. And Shine is just about out of this game uh, he's kept it close for a little while but there's really nothing left for him to do except send all of his forces to the front and try to break this tank line and uh, if he can't break through that there's really nothing left for him in this game he will kill the tanks but marines pushing their way into the natural just with one single medic Still able to take reasonable fights, being that they're 3-2. Killing off a lot of drones. He kills the fourth base. Potentially a drop heading into the main. No, it's an empty drop, but GG is called Shine Taps Out. Ooh, that's not that's not the way I expected this series or this uh, game to go. I really thought that Shine was going to put up a better fight, but you can just see how on top of everything speed is at this point and even though he lost his initial dropship and he didn't do too much damage leading up to this moment if shine was in a pretty reasonable spot at 70 supply to 112 he was still able to do enough just with the single drop harassing with the irradiates and threatening to dive on either of these naturals that shine just kind of fell apart he wasn't able to pull things together and this is this is scary what what speed can do at this point in his career he is incredibly skilled like this move was great the other pair of scourge didn't didn't get uh activated though and yeah, he wasn't able to prevent the reload and secondary follow-up drop that did the real damage of this attack. It's so frustrating to chase Marines around inside your main as a Zerg player. I really feel for Sharp in this moment. He wants to get on top of this and, and prevent it, but he can't be losing Lurkers because if he has to pull more from his natural or his main... He's going to have a really rough time. I'm not sure where these mutas were sent, actually. Where did those mutas go? And why did they leave right as this was coming in? That seems a little bit crazy to me. Let's see what Sh Shine was actually seeing during this time. It's remarkable how little you can perceive is what's going on. When the Terran player is dropping you and pressuring you like this. He has hardly any vision. All he can see is the floating factory. And I guess that's some good information. But he sees the dropships coming in. Gets one of them right before it, it unloads. But it doesn't even matter. Look at how powerful this is. You have to be very careful. You see, he pulls three lurkers from his natural... This is something that you can die to as well. As a Zerg player, you have to be careful. Pulling the three Lurkers, he can immediately run his Marines over to the natural and just start 
uh, attacking into this natural. You can even run by and kill the Nidus Canal because one sunken colony is not going to kill Marines fast enough. You can kill the sunken, you can kill the Nidus, and then unburrowing these lurkers in this stack, they're going to glitch on top of each other, and it'll be hard to get them through the Nidus Canal. So there's a lot of openings here that Speed can exploit, and I think he did a fantastic job uh, exploiting them. Shine just was not able to keep up. He really wanted to get into this Hydra Defiler play, but it didn't seem very strong against what Speed was able to bring out. Maybe if he had the Mutas in the mix as the uh, drops were coming in, maybe he could have done something about this, but even though this didn't get a huge, huge amount of damage and he was able to bring the Mutas up in time to to fight the marines ah the micro just wasn't quite there either plus the irradiates coming in as well is so frustrating more scourge over here gonna hunt down one of those science vessels but then the drop of the natural speed is so good at this type of thing he is so good at maximizing his value out of these the the drops in the mid game and immediately sends it to the natural then he's going to send his science vessels over here to irradiate uh, at this space and maybe try to get some damage with the uh, eraser trick. Or does he send it to the natural as well? I thought he went for an eraser trick immediately after, but I could be wrong. Yeah, there it is. The eraser trick immediately after. He just knows that Zerg is trying desperately hard to recover and there's already so much going on. He's used up a ton of scourge to kill that one dropship behind the natural so he knows oh you just lost six scourge you probably don't have another eight scourge just sitting around uh, that you can use to deal with these vessels so just send them all in we'll get a whole bunch of drones and we'll delay you even further just sending it in like this uh, if you haven't done the earlier damage it's not that great losing some vessels just for a few drones is not going to be the greatest but because he already did a bunch of damage in the main and he slowed things down for Shine, this is a great move. He killed a bunch of the Scourge, he forced a lot of the mining to stop, and now he gets in, kills a ton more drones. It's absolute nightmare territory for a Zerg like me. Shine just can't quite handle it. He's re-droning and trying to squeeze out Scourge at the same time, but he's just struggling so hard. And dude, speed is just so good at this stuff. I've already said it enough though. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little video. And I'll see you in the next one.